Good afternoon. This, uh, good evening. This is going to be a video of the third one on dealing with Brian Denver's uh, new series on sayings of lost people. So let's uh, get in here. This is the one of uh, judge not lest you be judged. And he's making he's gonna make a big deal, but it's not exactly what it says. The same it means the same thing as uh, Matthew seven one. Common sayings of lost people, number three, one of my favorite ones. Judge not, lest ye be judged. I used to listen to Metallica as a um, teenager, and they had a song called Holier Than Thou, and I remember they'd say, Judge not, lest ye be judged yourself, you know. And and, uh, and it's so funny because when you actually read the Bible, the Bible doesn't even say that. King James Bible. I won't speak for the other ones that come from the Vatican, the ESV, the NIV, the NASV, all that garbage. We're talking about the King James Bible, King James Bible believers here. Let's actually go to the text. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. It doesn't say lest ye be judged. All right. So one of my favorite things to do when you get one of these people and they come and they say, hey, judge not lest. That's exactly what it means. You nut. They mean the same thing. To be judged. Just play stupid and just say, the Bible says that? It says, judge not lest you be judged. King James Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. Yeah, it means the same thing. You can make a big deal. That means it doesn't, uh, you know, judge not so, you, so you, you won't be judged. Judge not that you be not judged. Because basically saying that if you judge, you're going to be judged back. It means about the same thing. I wasn't aware of that. Oh, where does it, where does it say that? Can you show me where that verse is? Now, if you make a whole big deal that this is all about believers, of course you know it's about believers. It says brother. Unbelievers aren't your brother. You're supposed to be deep to this guy. Please. And they'll stumble around. Wow. Who is this guy? This guy, and he's like, all these guys, you know, they have a few few years of doctrine, and they think they know it. This is this is the superficial Bible teaching of a mad heretic. I'm not really sure. When, you know, it's it's in there. I know it's in there because I I heard it and and it's it's it. you say. Um, Gee, an unbeliever not knowing whether things are in the Bible. What a shock! <laughs> Gee, why would why would unbeliever know there's something in the Bible? I'm not sure where it is. Could you, I mean, please enlighten me, please. I mean, tell me where judge not lest ye be judged. Uh, show me where it's at. And when they stumble all over themselves or whatever. Well, no unbelievers. Yeah, tell them whether anything's in the Bible. You have to wait. I'm oh, sorry, I don't really know. Just say, let me show you. Gee, isn't that nice of you? Matthew chapter 7. Ooh, Bible scholar. Okay. Judge not that ye be not judged. It means the same thing. Lest ye be, not, ye be judged. Why? Verse 2. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Mm -hmm. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Mm -hmm. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not brother's eye? Not the only saved person. I mean, a lost person. The only a brother. Not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine own eye, or out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Notice, by the way, in context, it's talking about judging brethren. Yeah. Ooh, that's deep. Say brother. Um, where does the Bible say that we're not supposed to judge lost people? Where does it say we're not supposed to judge lost people? Where does it say we're supposed to judge lost people? I mean, the fact is they're dead. We understand they're lost. And we understand when they sin, that's, that's how lost people operate. So, of course, they're going to operate like lost people. I mean, who else is going to judge them? Uh, uh, we're not supposed to judge them. We're supposed to get them saved. Should we wait on other lost people to judge lost people? Um, no. Uh, judge them for what? What are you judging them for? You're judging, the idea of judgment is for the purpose of separation or fellowship. So what are you judging lost people for? If the lost people, 
Paul says that. Well, I'm not telling you just to keep separate from lost people because you have to leave the world. He's talking about keeping separation from brothers who are involved in certain sins. He says, well, hey, I, that's what, these are lost people. You can't separate from them because you have to leave. You have to become a hermit. Ooh, if you're saved, if you're born again, you have to judge the lost people. You have to tell them that they are sick and need in, in need of a cure. They're not sick. They're dead. He uses that covenant issue in Luke 12. That's a covenant relationship. When you're out of fellowship, you get sick. The Lord was looking for lost sheep. That's a covenant relationship. Unbelievers aren't sick, called sick. They're called dead. They're dead in Adam. In Adam, all die. In Christ, all made alive. In uh, Romans 5, this guy talks about uh, unbelievers being sick. But unbelievers aren't sick. That's why going to the lake of fire is called the second death. It's not called the second sickness. You're a sinner. Your sickness or your sin has made you sick in God's sight. The cure is... Oh, no. You're born dead in Adam. You sin because you're a sinner. That's why you sin, because that's what you were born to do. You were born dead in Adam. Jesus Christ. This guy. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll just let the Buddhists tell the lost people that, or the Muslims, or something like that. No, they don't have a cure. Christians don't tell people, lost people, they're sick. We tell them they're dead. And they're on the way to the second death. Hell, the lake of fire. You know, crazy. Yeah, you're crazy. But let's talk about this, okay? Let's see what the how what this whole passage is really about. It's about his uh, Romans 5.12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. Let's say sickness. Let's say sickness passed upon all men. It said death. Death passed. You know what? You know who uh, Precious, uh, 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 the guy went against Augustine, uh, I can't remember his name right now, uh, he preached that people were sick. They weren't born, they weren't born dead in Adam. Uh, I can't remember his name. It's, it's escaped right now. But I'll think of it. But that, he's preaching heresy, another heresy. <laughs> preaching another heresy. The critical judgment. Okay, that's what it's talking about. Matthew chapter 7, verse 5. Thou hypocrite. Look at this. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Hmm. So, number one, it's talking about judging between brethren, saved people. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, okay. Take a theological genius to figure that out. But the, lost, the lost sin is not, is not sick, he's dead. But a, a, a plagian. Plagian, Plagius said man was sick, and he could, he, you know, he could use his own free will to get better. No, you're dead. Now we don't take that death the, the way the Calvinists take it, total depravity in the sense that man is unable to make a decision. He still has free will, but he is spiritually dead. Secondly, it's saying it's not saying you cannot judge. It's saying don't be a hypocrite and judge somebody else. Don't come down on some brother who's who's messing around and, and you know committed adultery or something like that. Some brother who's committed adultery. The last video we just chucked on Harvin for being married three times, which is adultery. But Harvin's not a brother. Last video, he jumped on Harvin and said Harvin was a lost man because he got married three times. That's what he said. When you yourself are a porn addict. See, he likes that porn thing because that's what he was. So he keeps bringing that up. That's one of the sins he knows he he, has, he keeps admitting about. And we're supposed to believe he's not doing it anymore. We don't know what he's doing. He's a hermit. You know what I mean? Don't come down on some guy that's uh, having a, you know, got drunk one night or whatever else when you yourself get drunk a little bit. <laughs> on and on and on. Uh, don't come down on somebody for coveting some thing that you wouldn't covet, but yet you covet something else. Like a, a lot of like a lot of automobiles. <laughs> four by fours. Uh, that's what it's saying in the text there. That's what it's about. Like land, like land in Maine. Hypocritical judgment. Don't be a hypocrite when you judge. First, get victory over the sin in your life, and then you can see clearly to say, "Hey, I was a pornography addict, and I was." Okay, I've done a lot of studies on this thing. And, oh, we've done a lot of studies on it. Actually, it takes a lot of study. 
and how to get out of porn addiction. Oh, it's about getting studying. He didn't use the Bible to get out of porn. He used a lot of study to get out of porn, people. You see that? That's psychiatry. He didn't get out of porn using the Holy Spirit, following the Holy Spirit, using the scriptures. He didn't get out of porn that way. He uses the studies, the psychological studies. He didn't use the Bible. But how could I? What did you, you use, Brian? The Bible? How to get out of porn addiction. But how, I was a pornography addict, and I was. Okay, I've done a lot of studies on this thing and, and how to get out of porn addiction. I've done a lot of studies on these things, how to get out of porn addiction. So he's not talking about the Bible. But how? How do you get a porn addiction? The scriptures. The scriptures teach you to look upon your own wife, not to lust upon another woman. Very simple. The Bible ought to tell you exactly how to get a porn, control your eyes. All the scriptures tell us about that. Marriage, the marriage bed is undefiled. All the things, it's there. You know, any studies. You have to believe the scriptures, though. How can I tell somebody to get out of porn addiction when I myself am still looking at it? I don't know, you probably do. <laughs> Nothing surprised me about you, Brian. You use studies to get out of your porn addiction. You didn't use the scriptures. He just said that. He just admitted that, people. I know a lot of studies how to get out of porn addiction. All you need is the King James Bible. But when the Lord helps me to get out of that addiction, and now I can... Well, what? Not with the, not the studies. That's psychological nonsense. You see, it tells you one thing. Unbelievers can become more. Unbelievers can break alcoholic addiction. Unbelievers can make break drug addiction. Unbelievers can get out of porn addictions. See that? He says a lot of studies teach about porn. He didn't say anything about the King James Bible. See, clearly, now I can say, hey, brother, here's what you need to do. Hey, sister, here's what you need to do to get out of that pornography addiction. Somebody that's an alcoholic, they get away from it. They get victory over that sin. Now they can see clearly to tell somebody else, to counsel somebody yeah, else. Yeah, tell them about the studies. Let me tell you how my studies got me out of alcoholism, uh, uh, being drunk, my studies. That's what the passage is about. And if the passage is about you're supposed to make a judgment about who you're fellowshipping with. And Paul talks about that in First Corinthians as well, who to, about separation. It has nothing to do with judging lost people. Uh, yeah, we don't judge lost people. They're dead. <laughs> we know exactly what lost people are. Nothing at all. Well, yeah, thank you. Because that's what the passage is talking about. It's not talking about judging lost people. It's talking about talking brethren. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, another very important verse with this whole thing. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. What a terrible thing. Oh, Brian Denlinger is such a sarcastic guy. He, he, he turns more lost people away than he saves. Nonsense. People know so much about me. They know more about me than I know about myself. You know, no one knows anything about you, Brian. That's the problem. You're not accountable to anybody. You spend whatever money you have, however you want it. You're not accessible by email. You're not accessible by a phone. You do what you want to do. And no one knows exactly any how, how you're living. But you're supposed to tell us how righteous you are. You're supposed to be, there's no accountability. But you're righteous. And you're supposed to, oh, you know, you know, look at me. No one knows how you're living. We just have your word for it. So, yeah, we don't know what you're living. We don't know where your money goes. We don't know what you're doing. We don't know what, you're, what how you spend most of your time. It's funny. But then, oh, he's so sarcastic. What do you think about Jesus Christ right there calling lost people dogs and swine? I don't know. Are you Jesus Christ? I think Jesus Christ is able to say who, what he wants to say. It's not different. When someone else wants to say it, that's what the whole idea is. You better make sure that you can't come back to you and say what are you talking about? Jesus. Gentle, meek, mild, happy, smiling Jesus. Jesus never called happy. <laughs> never called happy. Uh, you're a dog. You're a swine. It's one time Jesus was maybe Joyce. And that, uh, that uh, the truth was hidden from those who profess themselves to be wise. He rejoiced in that. Hmm. And you get mad at me. 
you know, because you're not Jesus. That might come as a shock to you. I know he thinks he's the Apostle Paul, you know, so. Sure. Yeah, sure. People get mad at him. Get mad at you because you're a liar and a deceiver. Now you're teaching plagiarism. Uh, you're a plagiarism heretic. That man is sick. He's born sick. The fact is he's born dead. Dead in Adam. So what I'm saying is Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5 is about judging between brethren. Verse 6 it goes in and says, Give not that which is holy unto dogs, you know, and swine basically. Talking about lost people. Luke chapter 6 verse 37 and 38. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all, it shall be measured to you again. What do you think Brian ever gives anything to you? you think Brian gives anything to anybody? Nope. Yeah. Brian's about getting all these ministries on YouTube. They all have donate buttons on them. PayPal. All getting paid for by somebody. Because they want money. If you're kicking somebody and you yourself have the same problem, it's going to be a problem. But you know what? The reverse of it is when you finally get victory over that sin, and now that beams out of your eye, you know, beams out of your eye and you can see clearly to, to take out the moat out of your brother's eye, guess what? It's a great blessing. Your point is not supposed to judge him. So he's saying, before you even look at the other person's mode, he's like, take your own beam out. You're not supposed to judge the other guy. You haven't helped the other guy. But the point is, there'll be a judgment in the sense that you don't treat him as an enemy. You, don't, you treat him as a brother. But there might be separation about him. Brian doesn't understand that. Brian has no concept of that. To have Brian, if you're not following Brian Denler's doctrines and way of life and living like a hermit, you're lost. To help people get out of the sin that you yourself used to struggle with. That's what the passage is about. It has nothing to do with judging lost. No, it has to do about the hypocrisy, like you said, the hypocrisy, but it's not about helping the other person with their sin. The issue is making sure you deal with your own sin. People. It's not about helping the other person with their sin. Issues by making sure you take care of your own sin, take care of that. No, you're not able to help the other person with that sin until you get the the beam out of your own eye, you know. And uh, so you, you know, is there the moat? <laughs> it's a little, you know, the moat, little speck. You know, that's, you, you think you know you better worry about your own your own major problem there, as opposed to looking at a little speck and you look at oh that guy's doing this, that guy's doing that. But no, Brian's not accountable to anybody. Brian is so, so about it. Everybody's sick. He goes to the Luke, passage in Luke 12. That's not about... That's a covenant relationship. That's not, those, are, those, are, um, those are believers in a covenant relationship that have gotten on fellowship. We don't look at unbelievers as being uh, sick. They're dead. They're dead. And they're on the way through a second death. That's what this whole changed life is about. They just think, oh, well, we're just going to get you better, you know, with the sin. You know, sin's like a sickness. No, sin is death. Let me stop and put this up. Amen. Thank you.